Hey guys, so just wanted to um, show you a <coughs> quick video on what I've been up to tonight. So, um, I've been making a ZBrush insert mesh brush uh, out of 3D scans of corals. And uh, these are quite detailed scans uh, available for free from the Smithsonian 3D digitization program and if you go to this website 3d.si.edu you can go through and download a whole bunch of cool scans uh, some of them have textures on them but uh, yeah I went to the coral collection and then just uh, downloaded a whole bunch of these um, and the, the meshes, the scans are pretty good. They have a bunch of different options for 3D printing, watertight, with texture, etc. So yeah, I just went through and downloaded the ones that I liked uh, with interesting shapes. And my intention is to use this brush uh, to add detail to scenes and characters and, and my artwork basically. Uh, so corals, they have really interesting forms uh, you know I can uh, work off those or just use them as texture so <clears throat> I've gone through and downloaded uh, about 20 of these and I'll just quickly show you what they look like they're really nice yeah pretty good quality scans uh, good enough to be used in you know ZBrush art pieces or if you're concepting I didn't import these with uh, textures because what I ended up doing was uh, after I imported them into ZBrush as STL watertight meshes, uh, I decimated them. So when you decimate, uh, to, to get a good decimation, you get rid of the textures. So that's all good. Um, yeah, the textures generally have lighting baked in them anyway, so they won't usually work well. But for what I need it for is uh, basically just you know, adding in detail to my scenes. So yeah, you can see these are pretty awesome. And these have been decimated, so if you see, if I zoom right in, the details get crunchy. But most of the time, they'll probably be seen, you know, like this, at this size. So very interesting corals. Uh, so once I've imported them in, I do a cleaner pass and sometimes the bottom of these have uh, bases in them. So if I just import one in to show you. And then some of them, sometimes they are in like really weird scale as well. So they can be really big or small. So what I, what I did was import them all into a scene and then scale them to the right size because when you're creating a ZBrush insert mesh from multiple subtools, they all need to be relatively the same, same scale. So you can see these ones, uh, some of them have bases attached to them. So all I did was just cut that out, fill the hole, and then sometimes on some of these pieces, uh, they crop really short so what I did was uh, on some of these I just extended the base out a little bit like that and then clean up uh, because when you're doing the insert mesh uh, you want it to be going into the mesh so don't want any floating stuff in there um, just makes it look better okay so uh, so that's all the yeah all the 20 models of uh, coral and I've just gone through and decimated each one and each one is about uh, they range between 250,000 points to uh, 100,000 points depending on the amount of detail uh, and they come in pretty high res at about 500 point 500,000 points so decimate them and then I've um, make sure they're all aligned to the center as well uh, so you can see that this is uh, just slightly offset to the bottom 
but aligned to the center. So uh, when you create your insert, insert brush, uh, insert multi-mesh brush, it's important to get everything to the center. Um, so I've done that. And then, so the final step is to just create the brush. So I'm just going to quickly save this. Now, when you create your insert mesh brush, uh, you want to, it takes the orientation of your camera uh, as the inserting camera projection point. So you don't want to be looking at it on the side while you create the brush. You want to be looking at it from the top. And that way it sort of, when you do the, uh, insert brush it actually shoots it to the bottom uh, that way Oop. top to bottom so you want to look at it from the top when you create the brush and then what you want to do is go to B and then create insert multi mesh brush and what that's going to do is take all the sub tools in this uh, in this project and then create no, it's so quick and easy. It's awesome. I love ZBrush for this. Uh, and, and create. You see up the top here all the uh, all of the models into a brush that you can just drag and drop anywhere in the scene. So I've got this created, and then I will just go to an example scene here. Uh, TV. And then when you're using uh, the insert mesh brush as well, just make sure that your embed option is set down to the bottom. If you if you check this out, uh, just select maybe this one, and then do a projection. You see how it doesn't actually push it right down, uh, and that's because your embed is above this height. So if you lower it down and do it again. You can see that it's not pushing in. So you just got to find a happy balance here. Uh, and because we set it all to the right, to the same, uh, in same uh, level in that original tool set, uh, once I set it to the right height, everything else should be going in. Now it is annoying that some somehow it uh, always resets it back to a hundred so I got to yeah maybe they fix it in the latest version but you just need to make sure that uh, yeah your embed level is uh, set to whatever you want and I think if you do this and then save the brush uh, it will actually do it properly I right, save it but yeah this is so cool and it's really quick and easy way to get a crap ton of detail in your model or scene. The only problem is that you, your scene will get really heavy. So it's a balance between having enough detail and uh, having too much detail and too many polygons in your scene. Um, which can probably blow up your computer. <laughs> Love the power of computers, right? And look at these free juicy detail. And after you've dropped them down, you can always move them around, scale them up if you need to, and all that jazz. Um, so yeah, that's that's my little talk for today. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. In, uh, ZBrush insert mesh brushes are really cool and uh, if you use the models that I showed you from the Smithsonian um, they got tons so I'm thinking I'm probably doing a bones um, version soon um, they've got like um, skeletons of different animals and stuff like that so We'll probably go through and break each one up into separate uh, pieces and then create like a bones brush. That would be pretty cool. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think of this uh, idea. I mean, you know, this brush has been around for years. Uh, let me know if you use it. And if you do, uh, what you use it for.
Cool. Thanks, guys.